So I'm, I know Hillary, I know you because we worked together at B Tech. So that was like 10 years ago, right? Oh, you wish it was 10 years ago. It was like 15 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> you are so funny. <laughs> Dang, that was 12 or something like that. That was a long time ago. Yep. Yeah. And you were just always so supportive. Like when I wrote my book, you had bought it and you re- wrote a review on Goodreads. I was just looking at that review. That- <laughs> about that yep <laughs> <laughs> and then I have a couple of pictures of you like uh, when my father came and did a presentation and you came yes. yep I have that picture do you want me to send it to you yes we did a family picture. and then when um M1 came and did the assembly and then there's a group uh-huh. picture we took there <laughs> how do you have I have nothing I have a, like, oh, I'm gonna yeah. send you <laughs> <laughs> no photographic evidence that I was ever there what that's crazy. Oh, hell yeah. I'm going to send it to you. <laughs> um, but can you introduce yourself? Because I don't want to miss anything. Sure, sure. Um, Hillary Walker, um, veteran teacher, and now um, serving as director of the Bay Area Writing Project, which is um, it's a lot of things. But um, primarily, we do um, professional development for educators around the teaching of writing. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so I am working with uh, a lot of wonderful, really gifted teachers and writers um, uh, to lead professional development, um, to teach courses, to try things out. And um, yeah, I, I mean... I don't know, just kind of figure out all of the ways that writing can serve us um, mm. in amplifying voices of teachers and, and just sort of rediscovering ourselves, ourselves as writers and, um, and emphasizing the importance of um, the act of writing for teachers um, who are teaching writing, but like <laughs> often don't, don't actually get a chance to um revisit or write for themselves very often so Mm, that is so real yeah yeah being a teacher of writing and they're not even being able to practice it for yourself yeah and I mean I was certainly guilty of that and arguably still am which is how I found my way to you (laughs) Uh, but yeah I mean I guess that's what I do professionally and then um I'm a parent um originally from Sacramento, long time <laughs> Oakland resident at this point, and uh, yeah. yeah, I'm a Libra. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for sharing all that. <laughs> um, so let's just get into it, because you came in, and originally you were thinking about focusing on writing an article. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But what shifted for you that you decided to write I don't know. Can I name what you're writing about? Or? Sure. Yeah. Okay. That what shifted for you to decide to write about uh, your father? Um. Well, I think I think there was like the pressure of of being in this particular role, and I think most of it, to to be fair, is like self applied pressure. Mm. Um, uh, about like, well, you know, I should be writing. I should be publishing. I should be doing all the things that I say, you know, others should be doing um, and that I believe that others should be doing, but I should lead by example. And so for me, a lot of our our kind of current work had been around like professional writing, writing about classroom, writing about teaching and that those, those voices and those experiences needed to be much more central and educational policy um like but how do you consult with teachers if teachers voices are like routinely um ignored or like not invited into a conversation so anyway so like that's kind of like the preaching larger guy i'm like you know i know i know you know what i'm talking about (laughs) um so so anyway so i was thinking like okay well what can i what can i offer like sort of from that side of things and like how to 
how can I write for like me professionally? Mm. And I just wasn't like super, um, I don't know, like I wasn't really that motivated by that. Um, and I tend to write other kinds of things. Like when I do have the time and the space, like I don't end up writing a professional article about education. Mm-hmm. Like I don't, and not just, not that I couldn't, but I just don't. And so the kinds of writing that I end up doing is usually um, poetry. It's like maybe some like little short pieces that could become an, uh, an essay writing about music or writing about other stuff you know it's just not it's not necessarily what what would go into like a (laughs) teaching tolerance or American educator or whatever it's it's not that Mm -hmm. um but it does give me something and it fulfills me in a different way so um yeah so pretty early on I shifted my focus to like writing what mattered and what was present and coming up for me and so a lot of that has been just around family and, uh, and my dad uh, and just sort of understanding and reckoning with aging, uh, with memory and memory loss um, and language. And so I guess those are like recurring themes in my writing um, and especially in my writing about my dad. But then the other piece was um, this tie to like this really like important drive for me around land, around Mm. farming, around gardening. um, And that that is a connection that I share with my dad. So some of the writing ended up, well, all of it for this ended up revolving around aspects of gardening and food one more connection that a lot of times when teachers come into like their writing project programs and then are asked to write like have that very same sense of like it's almost like intimidation like dang okay well maybe these are like more serious writers than I am Mm. you know and then you know you kind of start working against yourself rather than just letting it go Mm -hmm. Um, and so when I came in I was like dang okay well I know they're I think they're incredible writers and what they, you know, shared initially, it was like, there was like a little bit of that coming in, but I was just so excited to see like their writing develop. Mm. I was like really excited about, you know, being able to get feedback, which is a whole thing. Like I intellectually understand the importance of it and I always talk about it, but I don't often get feedback or or ask other people to look at my writing or listen mm-hmm. to my writing. Um, and so that was a really nice um, routine that was just part of the group. Um, and, you know, the the two other participants in my writing group, I don't know if I can name them, but- Oh, um, yeah, you can. I've okay. interviewed them too. <laughs> Chessa and Adrian um, were just really um, incredible and warm, thoughtful, like, listen Mm -hmm. carefully and obviously you too like I'm like not like you were not there Um, (laughs) (laughs) in the feedback sessions and it was like oh yeah you know I didn't I didn't even notice what I did there or I didn't even pick up on a a, a theme across pieces um that took it being reflected back in a particular way and so I think part of like why part of why I wanted to join was to have like a more routine practice Mm -hmm. I wasn't convinced I was going to publish anything Mm. wanted to write and see what happened um and I think when I decided I wasn't convinced I was going to publish anything was when I made the shift to not focus on professional writing now I feel a little differently but um I just figured okay well maybe this will just really be for me like this is the writing that I need to do right now and this is for me and and that's worthwhile mm. um and if I publish somewhere some parts of it whatever like that's awesome but I would I, I won't make that my only marker of success mm. you know what I mean 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I think that's part of what drew me um, to the group was just being able to sit down, share writing, have a, have the accountability of like, well, I can't keep sharing the same, <laughs> the same little raggedy piece of a poem. Like I'm going to have to come with some additional work. I'm going to have to revise. I'm going to have to add because that's, otherwise there's no substance for the conversation. Mm. Um, so I really, I needed that and I appreciated that. Mm. How, how did you see your writing develop over the course of the program um well, i think it's interesting because i i was like playing with different forms mm. but the interesting piece was that no no one saw the actual like text mm. so it was just like through my voice for reading parts of it that one could maybe pick on up on this might be, you know, sort of just like prose, or this might be like this really differently structured line break situation. Mm -hmm. It was really up to me to read that. But then I'm curious about like how it would read if it, you know, someone read it in, in isolation or outside of me. Mm -hmm. speaking yeah, about, uh, that's a good point. It, it is a a very audio experience, huh? Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that's fine. Like, mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Um, but it just, I realized that my, I was like making like these different moves with it, with form that I don't know um, that anybody else would have noticed. So that was mm -hmm. sort of like an internal process. Mm -hmm. um, and then I added, I added pictures and photographs, mm. uh, so that there's there's definitely a visual piece um, that I think will make sense if and when anybody read the action, read the text. Mm. Yeah. And now with um, the way we practiced feedback, giving it and asking for it, now um, you have more tools in terms of. Mm -hmm requesting feedback from mm -hmm. the team, people you trust to <laughs> yeah. this layer. Yeah. yeah. And then I could say like something like, okay, well, the first, my first draft of this, I wrote, you know, just kind of as like a paragraph, like in my writing, like the, the parts of it that are like gardener's notes, which are really just more like kind of reporting back what I remembered or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, if I said, okay, here's what I, here's my first draft of that, but I also played with it in this form. Can you listen to the difference, you know, words that I took out or mm -hmm. the flow? Like, can you do that? So I feel much more equipped to like talk about those kinds of choices. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Um, another thing that's interesting, and you touched on it a little bit before, is music. So all of us have this music background, which we found out about each other. Right? We all had this hip hop background, this hip hop interest, this music background. And then your father, as you write about him, um, this music component even comes up. In, yeah. 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 And I mean, I think, I think what I, one thing that I love and appreciate about we talked specifically about hip hop, but um, one thing that I appreciate about about that is like that there's there's constant like innovation and there's constant there's just, like tradition of like ripping and like pulling pieces that someone may not remember from one song and incorporating it or picking up on it. like just sort of the ability to remix something mm. and I think that actually does like is a great analogy for the way that I think I write mm -hmm. um, but like if you if we like take that analogy a little further I never really wrote anything that was like a collection of things around one topic 
I would just like write random things and I never really saw a through line between them mm-hmm. like there would be some things I might pick up in another piece that I would misplace or whatever you know just a mess but <laughs> I yeah I just really would it, it would be like like writing or like making an album you know mm-hmm. I mean? mm-hmm. like a whole album that in the best of circumstances has this sort of art to it mm-hmm. I like, you mm-hmm. know repeating themes it's not just random stuff thrown together but there's right. some intentionality around it mm-hmm. so I think that 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 plays into it obviously like I just love um music and the way music transports you back you know to these different memories or reconnect things mm. like a song at the moment yeah. um, I love how you um, pointed that out, like how an album uh, usually has a theme or the, like you said, an arc to it so that there's something that draws everything together. Anything else you'd like to talk about? Mm, um, I'd like to talk about the author's reading and engaging um, other people. Okay. Um, one that like that's immediately, <laughs> I was like, Oh God, I have to tell other people that I write. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, some of them know that I do, but it's like, they're not necessarily like privy to me sharing it. Mm. Or like, they know. So I, I, at the author's event, I invited a couple of my friends who are were part of like another sort of group. And so I've done writing with and for them that's like specific to like their businesses or their idea, like their, you know, things. It's their, it's like functional writing, mm-hmm. not necessarily like, you know, poetry or anything like that. So they've seen some of my writing, but not, not, not the things that I think would be most personal. Mm-hmm. And so even for them, it was like, uh, what? Like <laughs> some of the, their feedback is like, I like had no idea, you know, mm-hmm. also that you do this kind of writing, just, you know, whatever. So, but anyways, but I would have not known that if I would just have stayed in my comfort zone of um, not telling anybody that, about any movie, <laughs> that I, uh, writing and maybe not writing and maybe publishing and maybe not publishing all mm-hmm. in silence and in isolation. So it, that was, that was like an immediate um like growth area for me and I think it was really helpful in the long run and so like being able to read for other people even not just people who know me who could be slightly biased but like reading for for everyone Mm -hmm. was like really empowering Mm -hmm. you know like Mm -hmm. I was I was nervous (laughs) but um I really thought that that was like a um like a special event yeah it was yeah I really like that the the author reading too and every time that um we have it uh I don't I think people underestimate the the power of it until after it's over then Mm -hmm. they're like oh my god I did it I got through it (laughs) (laughs) and then yeah and then by the like you said by the fact that you're you're inviting your people that you may not have explicitly shared this aspect of your life with as a writer, your writer life with, and then you're reading for other people because the other uh, clients are inviting people. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm, I'm glad that, that you enjoyed that. Thank you. So much. Yeah. And that all your people, they were so, um, <laughs> they, they participated asking the you know I love having the Q&A at the end the author questions the questions for the authors and they really were asking questions about process and I loved it and then oh my gosh when I saw people crying in the camera as you read <laughs> that was very moving yeah and I didn't even think about that which 
you know, we I was glad we were able to like process <laughs> afterwards, like mm-hmm. all the pieces of it. Um, but yeah, I just I just was really grateful for that experience, and mm-hmm. and I think it it hit in a different way. Like, I mean, I think the thing that may be different for me from the other two, actually, no, I would put Adrian in that too. Um, is like facilitating, like being facilitating, like that work is, is also super challenging. And so like, I tip my hat to you for sure. Mm-hmm. But like, it also means that a lot of times, like, you know, in my work, like I'm facilitating these experiences for people, but I can't necessarily participate in them. So like, I see the value of it, but I don't always have like that, like participant experience. Mm. And now I'm like, oh so now I get to be the participant and I really you know really really value it and then I look at it from like like metacognitively like what what is also happening and like how what are implications for that for my work and for my own writing so yeah wow and then um you Adrian and Chessa have met already once yeah at, since the program has ended right? yep we had our our first uh, sunday writing group um and we did like a, an hour and we talked about some intentions and mm. i think we really wanted to keep it um like a space where we can write but also where we can share and so we decided to i think i think we probably did like 40 minutes we only met for an hour, but like 40 minutes of that time um, was, the, I think it was the English Journal. So it's like more academic, but they had a call for different kinds of genre. And so like mm-hmm. I did a poem and they're like, no, thanks. <laughs> was like, okay. But you know what? Like I was like, oh, you know, I'm a little disappointed, but mostly I was still just proud of myself that I, I saw it through to the yes. submission. Part yes oh so, like just thinking about it like that if the writing served me it was good if it was something I needed to do then great and if no one else wants to read it that's also okay mm-hmm. end of the world <laughs> but eventually somebody will accept you know like yeah. yeah 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 but I love that I love how you like it just the whole process of it benefited you to do yeah absolutely yeah. Absolutely. Same thing with me, because as you know, I self-published my book. And although that within itself was uh, a, a growth process and I still had to hire, you know, proofreaders, editors, all that stuff, but it's um, different. The, this, this is the first year that I've been submitting to journals. Mm. And, you know, one journal um, accepted a poem and another oh. journal was like, we're gonna pass. <laughs> yeah, I was like, all right, then y'all lost it. All right. <laughs> but that's exciting. Yeah, it's more exciting too when we start uh, submitting to contests that pay. <laughs> that's exciting. I'm trying to. I'm starting to look into those. Yeah, yeah, and you know the the other thing that also excites me is. You know, I follow like all the, all of these writers and you know artists. Some some of them are not like strictly writers, but you know that get all these like little short fellowships to go do a writers retreat mm-hmm. somewhere. Yeah, that that would be nice. I, I was could, like, oh, but... I could see you doing that. <laughs> I see you enjoying that, I should say. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh well, thank you, Hillary. Yeah, thank you. And I, I, you know, can't say enough good things. Um, and, you know, I've been talking about my experience with others. And so I think there's definitely some more interest in, in um, life-changing writing. So hopefully Aww. I'm in your way. I appreciate it so much. I'm so glad to connect with you in this way because 
We have it. I mean, I would see your kids sometimes be like, hey, tell your mom I said hi. Or, <laughs> <laughs> or run into somebody. Oh, you worked with Hillary there. Oh, well, tell her I said hi. I mean, see her again. <laughs> Right, exactly. But, yeah, to nice. actually, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is lovely to actually connect. Hopefully, here's to more connections moving forward. Yeah, definitely. All right, Hales. Have a great day. Okay, thank you so much. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye. Bye.